just need to turn that down. Okay, so as you can hear, the reverb has been applied, but it's too much. Let's just stop that. Okay, so as I was saying before, don't get too concerned about what all these nobbles are going to do. Um, you've added some reverb already, it's a little bit too much, and what I normally do um, is go to the mix here and then just turn that down. Now as I was saying before, when you add reverb and delay, I think the less the better, you know? Um, and I usually have it a very low number, so let's just leave that at two and then play it again. So as you can hear that sounds much better. Okay, so you've added reverb. So you can click out of that and then I've lost my uh, effects insert window and that. So I'm just going to go back to the E here and then um, you may need to double click but it will pop back up. So I'm going to go down to the second insert. In the second insert, we are going to put some delay. So if you just go down to delay and down to whichever delay you want to apply to your audio. Um, I have a look around, you know, try different things and see how things sound. Um, I'm going to go to delay at the bottom and then you, we're going to see this window here. Again, don't get too concerned on what all the knobs are doing. Um, there's two sides to this because it's stereo. Um, don't worry about what that means. So, again, just go to a preset. So, use a little window here. Find a delay that you think sounds interesting or that you want to try. And then click it. Once you've clicked it once, it's going to load that up for you. Again, leave the day, delay open so you can tweak it. Okay, so I've applied um, a stereo delay called Endless. So let's just play that. Again, I'm going to hit the space bar. So as you can hear, I've pressed the space bar to stop it like a million years ago and it's still going. So that's way, way, way too much. So again, I'm going to go to the mix knob and I'm just going to turn them down to a very small amount and I usually do both sides. And what I normally do is double click the digits here and input what I want. I just find it's a lot faster. So let's just go to again. You may not hear a difference here, but um, let's just see. So let's click the spacebar. That sounds a lot better. Um, I can still hear the delay there. Um, and it still is a little bit too much for me, so I would probably just turn them down even more. Um, you can tweak other settings, and uh, the more confident you get in Cubase, the more you will start to just um, tweak around at stuff. I can still hear that delay going. Um, the only way you're going to learn how to do things, really, is to Google stuff and, you know, have a look at other posts that people have made with regards to uh, tweaking things. Um, and just, I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm not really a reader, I hate reading, so what I will do is, like, hover over stuff and I'll try things. And that's how I learn. If I get really, 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 really stuck, then I will Google something. Um, so just try different things and use your own ear because it's probably the best tool that you've got. That sounded so cheesy. <laughs> okay, so again, um, if this was a live drum um, 
recording then you would need to put comp compression on it um, basically what compression does is it's going to bring everything at an even smooth volume so uh, it, it if you have a vocal and the um, vocal is hitting some really loud points on certain lines and some really quiet ones um, then if you add compression it's going to bring the high stuff down and the low stuff up and it's going to give you a nice smooth volume all the way through and you're not going to be able to tell that the singer was belting that line and that she was really whispering on that line and you know I mean what would music sound like if you didn't do that you know so you need to be adding comp compression I don't think there's any point in adding it on this kick because as I said it's all at the same volume it was midi um, you're not going to notice any different but again to do it you would press the E and you would go to an insert and then dynamics and you would add compression and it's going to bring up another little window and then if you just press um, the little area I would pick a um, preset if you feel that there's too much on, again, I always go to, um, well, actually, on this one, you would go to threshold. I go to threshold, and I turn that the opposite way. So the closer it is to zero, the less it's going to affect your vocal or whatever. Okay, so finally, once you've added the very basic effects, um, when I say basic, I mean I've uploaded a lot of um, stuff on the internet that's, you know, had a good, good amount of plays with just uh, reverb, delay and compression on. Um, and if it's an acoustic track as well, the less you do to your audio, the better. Because, I mean, an acoustic version of something is meant to sound raw and, you know, not processed to the hilt. So, um, once you've done that, you want to be exporting your track onto your computer so that you can make your next move. So, you might add it to your iPod or upload it to the internet or whatever and be happy with it at that point, that's great. There's probably a lot of people doing that. Um, professionally, if it was going to radio or um, you was you know doing a full release on it um, and you was getting really serious on yourself, then you would, you would need to master it. And if you don't know what that is at this point, it doesn't even matter because it's the very, very last stage in uh, you know music making and that um, and it's not necessary for you to know about that because you can pay somebody to do it for you uh, you can learn how to master yourself if you like but at this point you're only just grasping how to you know sort all your production out so forget about those last final tweaky stages because um, you can pay someone to do it or you can learn about it at a later day and you know there's nothing stopping you from it sounding good just now and uploading it, it um, and some people um, disagree that mastering is needed at all and that like it maybe years and years ago it was needed and probably not so much anymore I don't know because you know I, I read little things here and there but it's not something I've completely dove into yet, but it is something I'm now becoming interested in. So, and that's what will happen. You'll get to a certain point in production and you'll think, right, I want to put it out, but I want it to sound awesome. I want it to sound like things do on the radio. Um, and you can get it close with your production and your effects and that, but again, you know, um, the mastering is the final stage and you can get somebody really good and professionally experienced at it. Um, but you want to make sure that your mix sounds awesome before it goes anywhere else because um, engineers that do the mastering can try and fix a bad mix, but if it's a bad mix, there's no hope for it, you know? If it's a great mix already, then it's, it's gonna be improved slightly so just make sure um, this bit sounds awesome before you do anything else um, and even at this stage you can have a very powerful impact with your music so 
what you need to do now is to mix that down onto your computer. So let's just click out of that and let's go to the mix down. Now if you don't remember where I showed you where it was before, you need to go up to file. And I bet you there's a shortcut key that you can learn so you can just do it. Uh, I've not learned it. You need to go down to export and there you can see audio mix down. So click audio mix down. Now you need to make sure, like I mentioned before, that your locators are at the either side of what you want to export. So from the beginning of your track to the end if that's what you're doing. I'm just going to leave mine where they are because it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, and then you're going to see this window. So you need to first of all put the name of your track or name of the part or whatever it is that you're mixing down. So just input a name. And then in the next little area, it's going to ask you where you want it saving to. And you're going to click and find your file. Once you've found it, press save. I'm already on it, so I don't need to do anything there. So if you bring in your WAV back into Cubase to do some mastering or you're sending it to somebody to have them master it and finish it off, um, it's your mix is going to be a WAV. If um, you're done at this stage and it sounds as good as you want it to and you want to put it on your iPod or upload it to the internet, you need to make it an MP3. MP3s are smaller, so they're going to take up a lot less room on your computer and they're going to be faster when they upload to the internet. So um, if there's no more editing to be done on your track, then you need it to be an MP3. So I'm just going to have an MP3 at this very moment. And then once you've done that, you need to go down to export here and click export and it will export the track for you. Now, I don't know everything there is to know about Cubase. I know just a small percentage, even though I've been learning it for years. Obviously, I've not been learning it every day, uh, but I do know, you know, enough. Um, but there's tons that I don't know. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is ages ago, um, well, not ages ago, but a while ago, I could just press S export and it would do it for me. Now, strangely, I must have pressed something somewhere. And now when I press export, it's asking me to set my output channels, which is just blagging me out. I don't even know why it's doing it. But So basically, I will press export and I'll get this little message. Um, and it says you have to select an output channel. And I know I'm going to get a ton of people now that says, Oh my God, you thick cow, uh, this is what you do, this is what you do, all in the comments, and fair enough, but, you know, this is what I'm saying. I don't know everything there is to know, especially all, like, the techie techie stuff, uh, all the crap with the sound card and all that, that's just, it's not really my thing. That's when I get stuck and I have to Google. Um, I just hope that I just put the, the program on my computer and it works and I can go from there. So uh, I don't know why it's doing that. So I click my output channels and then I press export. And it exports my track for me into the folder chosen. Um, but the reason why this is really doing me editing is because when I go to find it here, as you can see, I see my track, but I also see output stereo out. That's what it's been named, .mp3. Oh, it's really getting on my nerves. And I know I could fix this within minutes if I would just go onto Google and find out what it is, but, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just getting round to it. Uh, as if the task was so hard. I'm just being lazy, but I will eventually do it and find out what it is, and, and then that's how you learn what you're doing. Um, you know, you, it's trial and error, you see something. The, my problem is I never remember. If I have a problem and I fix it, um, which... I always do because I haven't got anybody else to fix things for me. Um, I just never remember. So when it happens again, I'm like, oh, um, I forgot. And then I have to go back and research it all again and do it all again. Um, so if you do do that, the, you know, the professional, sensible thing to do would to be to take notes. <laughs> um, that's far too organised for me, though. So... I think that pretty much brings us to an end. Um, you've learned the basic things. You should be able to create a tune now. And I know I didn't speak about MIDI too much. 
um, but if you add a MIDI track and you've got your keyboard um, connected to Cubase, all you're doing is hitting the record button and playing on your keyboard or whatever and it's going to input the notes for you and it's pretty simple and then all you need to do is you need to snap all your notes in place because you're not going to be in time um, you're going to be a little bit out on each note and you need to snap it all in time and make it look like you played it perfectly like I do um, so it's pretty simple but I will go through it next time so that's really all you need to uh, know at this point and I hope that it helped you a little bit and my advice is if you learn any Cubase version um, and you keep learning it until you get good at it you can use any DAW going because once you've learned one you can pretty much work them all so it doesn't matter if you don't rate Cubase or you think you know such and such a thing is much much better um, I have a lot of knowledge now and I can take that with me into the next program and into the next program and it's all about you know you've got to start from somewhere you can't just leap to here or there you know without a starting point so you've got to start at that point and people might look down on you because they'll think you know what are you using that for it's like so many years old um, but that doesn't matter you just you know you just do what you do and to be fair when I went to college um, in 2010 the DAW that there was running there for the students was Cubase and I had already learned um, a, um, Cubase for a, a a couple of years at home so I was uh, a bit of a show off here and there because I knew what I was doing um, so you know the college here where I live was running that and they've probably changed that now so you know it's just it's just whatever works for you but learn one of them preferably you know something that's a uh, that's a little bit uh, that's got a good reputation you know not something that's well, I'm not going to be negative about anything, but um, basically on my computer I will run Cubase and I will record in Audacity sometimes. Um, I also run Melodyne on my computer and I use Cubasis on my iPad and also GarageBand. So that's fine for me at the moment. I'm at the, the, you know, the beginning stages, the learning stages, so just don't worry about it and have I'm going to say have fun, but you're not going to have any fun because it's dead hard. <laughs> uh, you're going to open it and you're just going to think, I can't do it. It's It looks too difficult. I'm never going to get it. I may as well just not bother. I'm never going to be a producer. I'm just going to be a crappy rubbish singer with no other skills to back me up because it just looks so terribly hard. Um, but depending on how determined you are to learn something like this, then you will. And here is the good place to start, just the basic, basic stuff. And then you can keep moving on. So if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. If there's anything specific that you want to talk about or you want to see in these tutorials, then just, you know, let me know. And uh, we'll work on that together. We'll get through it together. <laughs> so thanks for that then.